This is SportsCenter at the Indianapolis 500. The name is synonymous with Indianapolis 500 history. Through four decades, the Unser legacy dominated the Brickyard. Allenson joins A.J. Foyt as one of only two men ever to win the Indianapolis 500 four times. Sports Center at the Indianapolis 500 takes a look back at what the Unsers meant to this historic race. The Indy 500 to me means life itself. Also a trip down memory lane with the top 10 Unser family moments here at the Indianapolis 500. The checkered flag is out. Goodyear makes a move. Little Al wins. Well, there have been many great families that have raced here at Indy over the years. The Bukovichs, the Bettenhausens, father and son Andretti. How about the Foyts? But no family has done what the Unsters from Albuquerque, New Mexico, have accomplished here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We welcome you to a very special edition of Sports Center at the Indy 500, and we start by saying hello to the elder statesman of the Unser family. Bobby Unser, join us. And Bobby, it says elder statesman. I thought Al was older than you. No, he just looks like he's older than I am. I'm really <laughs> the oldest, but, but if you look at Al, he's getting old and creakety there, you know. <laughs> I tell you, Bobby, your family has done so much here. I mean, the Unser family has won the Indianapolis 500 nine times. What does this race mean to the Unsers? Well, the race means more probably than we could ever describe. This is, this is, we think that this is our place. You know, we've been here for so many years. I raced here 19 years in a row and made all the show, made the show 19 times. And so to us, it's just really important. And, and to have little Al win it twice, too bad that Robbie didn't stay and, and keep racing, but he was here two times. So things were really good for the answers. Uh, and of course, my brother Al winning it four times. That was really neat. And I was calling TV across the track the fourth time that he won it. So it was like I'd won it again myself too, see? Now, out of all those races, the three wins that you have and all those memories that you have, which one stands out for you the most? I got obviously the 68 race, which was the first one. And, uh, and it should always be that way because number one, as you well know, you, you don't really think that you can win the first one. You hope you can, you tell everybody yeah. you can, but you're yeah. not too sure that Lady Luck's gonna drop down right. on you that good. Well, it did that day and that was good. And so that's always the best. You know, when people talk about the Unser success here and the legacy at this racetrack, you mentioned your brother Al won it four times. You won it three times. When you ask the veterans who raced against you guys over the years, they will say, well, these two guys had different driving styles. They had vastly different personalities on and off the racetrack. How were you and Al different on the track in the car? Well, number one, Al, Al was almost a perfectionist. He just, you never saw Al make mistakes. He could stretch a car out longer than you could ever believe. He could take care of a car really good. Now, I didn't really have that reputation that Al had. I drove cars really hard. I qualified really hard. I practiced hard. When I tire tested for Goodyear, I did it in a hard way. Everything I did in life was, was really hard, and it was my way. And it's the way I still am today, and, and I liked it. Now, I dropped out of a lot of races maybe that I could have won but baby and race cars was not my system and not my way. And I still believe today, number one, you should practice hard. Number two, qualify really fast. And number three, lead. And then the good Lord will take care of the rest. Because if you lead enough races, he'll make sure you get to the end. And that's the way, that was my philosophy. I don't disagree with that whatsoever. You know, your son, uh, Robbie, raced here. Your nephews, uh, Johnny and Al Jr., both competed here. And now this month, your grandnephew, what they used to call him, Mini Al, Al Unser Jr.'s son, will race here. What does it mean for you to see the Unser legacy continuing here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway? Well, to me, it's very important. In fact, to our family, it's very important. And I wish we had a couple of more young ones coming up. That would certainly make all of us a lot happier. Every place I travel around the United States, sometimes around the world, people are asking, do you have any more answers coming along? <laughs> I tell them, I said, the best thing to do is to hurry up and invent that time machine. 
because I'll definitely come back and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've known you 20 plus years, and I've known you as a driver, and I've known you as a fellow broadcaster with our ESPN and ABC shows of the year. And I just got to say this, and I, and, I, and I rarely, if ever, do we compliment Bobby Unser because Bobby <laughs> loves compliments. But you must sleep in formaldehyde because you haven't aged a day in 20 years from the time you climbed out of the car. I wish that were true. If my body would just catch up, I was I was just with John Barnes a little while ago, and he and Gary Pettigo, and the first thing they said is come on we'll suit you up we got an extra car for you and you just don't know what that would mean to me if I could just get my body in good shape because I think my head's still working pretty good <laughs> I think it's working great Bobby thanks so much for taking time to come back and relive some of those great answer memories over the years well thank you it's nice to be back with you good to see you guys in real life now instead <laughs> on the television <laughs> all right we're not done talking to the answer family when we come back we'll be joined by the only father and son duo to ever win the Indianapolis 500 Center at the Indianapolis 500 is brought to you by Chase. Chase is built around the choices you make. Your choice, your Chase. The Indy 500 to me means life itself, and and uh, I've grown up watching my dad race here and win here, and Uncle Bobby race here and win here, and and I dreamed about just being in the Indy 500, and uh, it it. It gets so emotional for me that every time I qualify, and it's happened every year, I get done qualifying and I go down the back stretch and, and I get teary-eyed just because I've made the show. And, and that's, that's an, an honor and a, and a great thing within itself is just making the show. And, and, uh, and then to win it is just a dream come true. It's indeed a pleasure now to welcome the Unser family, father and son, Al Unser Sr. and Jr., who have combined to win the Indianapolis 500 six times. And gentlemen, thanks for taking time to come out and join us on a special day. We look back at the Unser legacy here at the Brickyard. And you, when you win this race once, I know it's special, but uh, how does winning the Indy 500 the first time change your life? Dad, you first. Well, it really changes it. You know, it really opens up a lot of doors to you. It it uh, tells you within yourself you've gone against the very best and was able to win, and it makes you very proud and happy the rest of your life. Al Jr.? Pretty much the same thing Dad just said. I mean, uh, a lot of opportunities come your way, and uh, it, it you know, you can go out and, and go against the very best and, uh, and be successful and, and you know, as I was growing up, racing was about the Indy 500, and if you could come here and be successful, then uh, then you've accomplished a great thing. They say winning it once is a life-altering experience. If you win it more than once, which both of you did, it can obviously have a huge impact. Now, Al Senior, you won this race four times, one of only three four-time Indy 500 winners. Which one of those four wins stands out most in your mind? Well, I think the last one because of uh, coming here without a ride and, and uh, you know, you, you're not sure what you want and what you should do. And, and then I was had a lot of offers and, and then the right one finally came up, which was Penske's ride. So uh, I jumped in that and, and uh, it all worked out. It was a storybook race, you know. It's something that probably uh, if you told somebody it was going to happen like that, it would have never been able to, to happen, but it did, and uh, I was very thankful. Little Al, you grew up around the racetrack. As, uh, the part, what your family always did was just go to the races. Can you recall what your first memories were when you saw your dad race? Oh, gosh. Um... My first memories really were uh, uh, of racing was, was at Pikes Peak, you know, when, uh, when I was six years old or something, you know, we, uh, we actually uh, went to, we were able to go to those races as, as, as children uh, here at the Indy 500. Um, it was a place where, uh, you know, my father was, was working and so, uh, you know, kids um, weren't part of the program in, in, uh, in, in below 10 years old and so on so my uh, my earliest memories of the Indy 500 was uh, was watching my dad win in 1970 and it was on a big closed circuits uh, screen there in Albuquerque New Mexico then I gotta ask you how proud were you to, to see your son following your footsteps well it made me very proud because you know to have your son 
or the member of your family following your own footsteps, it, something that, that you really love is an honor. And then having follow in the same footsteps of, of the Indy 500 and able to win it. I mean, it's just something that is just hard to talk about because it, it feels, it makes you feel so good and so warm and your heart just ticks very rapidly. Now, father versus son, what was it like for you guys to race against each other on the racetrack? Uh, Al, you first. Well, as long as uh, I could outrun him, I was all right. <laughs> Not really. You know, it, it, it's, uh, it's hard because, you know, running against your brother is one thing, but running against your son is another <clears> thing. <throat> and I thought when, when Al came along that it was going to be a very easy trip because I'd already been through my brother's days of running against each other, you know, as brothers. And it was simple. Simple. But running against Al was very, very difficult. I never could look at him as Al Unser Jr. I had to look at him as the sponsor of the car, whoever sponsored, you know, his car. And I said, I was going to outrun that car. And I couldn't really talk about or think about my son. So it was hard. Well, I found it uh, pretty easy, really. You know, uh, it was something that, that I could uh, look for look for it was something that you know dad was uh was seemed to be always in front of me and so it gave me something to chase and uh and then when uh when we started running with each other then you know he was he was another car that i had to pass in order to win the race and so you, you truly had to look at it that way much more ahead with America's leading auto racing family. Next up, the Unser dynasty from Bobby to Al to Little Al. How one family came to dominate the Indianapolis 500. And we invite you to join us here on ESPN2 for Carb Day coverage. The final practice session before Sunday's Indy 500 that's coming up on Friday. Of course, pit stop competition and our live coverage of the Menards Infinity Pro Series action here from Indy. 2 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. The checkered flag is out. Goodyear makes a move. Little Al wins by just a few tenths of a second. Perhaps the closest finish in the history of the Indianapolis 500. It sounds like there's some tears in your voice right now. Well, you just don't know what Indy means. <laughs> One of the greatest finishes you'll ever see in open wheel history. Allen Sir Jr. winning his very first of two Indianapolis 500s back in 1992. And what a close finish. Whatever happened to the guy you beat to the line that day? Well, I think he's sitting right right to my right, and uh, he keeps reminding me about it, too. <laughs> hey, one, of, one of these days, he's going he's gonna to pass it. I as many it. times as it's been showed. Yeah, I understand he used to take the picture and turn it upside down so he would have him finishing in front of you. That's what he says. <laughs> <laughs> Winning that day at Indianapolis, I mean, how much pressure did it actually take off? I mean, you, uh, the legacy of being Al Unser Sr.'s son and Bobby Unser's nephew, you finally had won the Great American Race. Well, it was it was huge. I mean, uh, actually, I was I was it was my tenth year back at the Speedway, and and uh, you know, with with what went on with in 1989 with Emerson Fittipaldi, you know, I was starting to think that uh, you know maybe it's it's just not for me to win this place, and uh, and so uh, you know, with the it, it was all I wanted to do was be successful at Indy, and uh, and when we finally did it. Um, you know, just like I was telling Jack Aroot, you know, you just don't know what it means. It was, uh, it was a bunch of pressure lifted off me. Al, as a driver and as a father, did you look at your son any differently now that he had won the Indianapolis 500? No, I really didn't. I, in fact, it kind of irritated me that day because he beat me. <laughs> so, no, not hardly. It, it made me very proud because, you know, you, you come to Indianapolis and you were successful and you would like to have your son, you know, be successful. So it really meant a lot that day. In fact, uh, as you know, uh, I run third to you two. And, and uh, by other years when I, something like that, when I didn't win, I was very unhappy. And I got out of the car that, that day and I was very happy because my son won. You know, first thing I, I said, you know, I says, did he win over the radio? And they said, yeah, he beat us. I says, good. <laughs> <laughs> now, the Andrettis and the Unzers have got such a history here, and you guys have won nine in the family, and the Andrettis have only won one. Why do you guys have the edge? 
Well, I wished we knew, yeah, you know. It, uh, I think we... You know, Scott, you often wonder yourself, mm -hmm. you know, what it makes, you know, a family successful or a person, and we don't know. Yeah, I think uh, really it just, uh, we were, were very, very fortunate to, uh, to have the success that we've had at Indianapolis because it is so hard to win here. Well, the next generation of uh, two of the great families in racing will be racing here this week. Of course, Marco Andretti, the son of Michael, uh, will be racing in the Menards Infinity Pro Series. And Alfred, 22-year-old Alfred, your son, Al Jr., will be racing. What does it mean for you to have the Unser legacy carried on by your son now? Well, it, it, uh, it means a great thing, you know. I mean, uh, to have little Al go out there and... and uh, Really what's important to me is that uh, he uses his head, he thinks about what's going on out on the racetrack, and, uh, and he seems to do that very, very well. And, and that's what's most important is to go, uh, you know, and, and just be a thinker while you're racing. Does, does he drive, let me ask you, uh, grandfather now, since it's your grandson, does he drive more like his dad or more like you or more like Uncle Bobby? No, he's not like Uncle Bobby. Don't even put him in that <laughs> class. I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, I, th I think he drives like Dad. In what quite way? Quite honestly, he just uh, he he thinks while he's running, and and you can uh, you can see that when when he's racing. You know, he he competed in the Infinity Pro Series last year, and and uh, he really uses his head and and has patience. You know, there was a. There was the one race in, uh, I believe it was Kentucky, that you could see that he lost his patience and uh, got a little too close to uh, a competitor, and then he ended up in the wall. But uh, but you could see it, and and uh, and so uh, you know, it was it it that is really the most important thing that uh, that my father taught me is is you know you got to make your move when it's time to make your move, and you have to have patience. And, uh, and use your head. Well, still ahead, it's our Sports Center Top 10 where we live the best Unser moments from Indy. Lots of great moments to choose from. See the best of the best when we return. Your brother, Al Unser, joins A.J. Foyt as one of only two men ever to win the Indianapolis 500 four times in his life. Absolutely fabulous. I just cannot believe it. Al, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Bobby. I just want yeah. you to know the family is proud of you. <laughs> that was neat. I'll tell you what, it's it's a great feeling. Okay, it, sure it really is, know. Bobby. And as you know, and I, I'm just I'm glad we're here. 1987, Al Unser's fourth and final Indy 500 victory. But where did that rank in our Sports Center top 10? Scott Van Pelt runs down the top 10 Unser moments here at Indy. At number 10, the Unser family legacy at Indianapolis would begin in 1968. Bobby Unser was five seconds behind Joe Leonard when the green flag came out on lap 192. As the green flag waved, Leonard's car slowed down because of a flameout, and Bobby Unser would go on to take the checkered flag with a record average speed of 152.882 miles an hour. Number nine, the decade of the 70s would be dominated by the Unser family. Beginning in 1970, pole sitter Al Unser led 190 laps, and when A.J. Foyt popped his clutch trying to avoid a major crash, Al driving the Johnny Lightning Special won his first of many checkered flags at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. At number eight, just a year later, the 1971 Indy 500 was a very special one for Al Unser. On his 32nd birthday, Al Unser capped back-to-back -back victories with a 23-second lead over Peter Revson. Al's most serious threat came from his brother Bobby late in the race. But when Bobby got into a serious crash, Al cruised to the victory. Number seven, the 1989 Indianapolis 500 will be remembered for one thing, turn three of lap 199. Fittipaldi would go on to win his first Indy title and the record first prize of just over $1 million. Number six, five years later in 1994, the roles were reversed. Emerson Fittipaldi was the one who crashed with 16 laps remaining, finishing 17th, allowing pole sitter Al Unser Jr. to claim his second Indy title in just three years. 
Number five, after a beautiful month in May in 1975, rains came on race day, forcing the race to end after 435 miles. While cars slammed into walls and skidded all over the track because of the wet conditions, Bobby Unser held off Johnny Rutherford by just a few seconds to win his second Indy 500 title. Number four, the 65th running of the Indianapolis 500 was won in an unconventional way. In 1981, Bobby Unser won the race, then lost the title to Mario Andretti the next day. Then, on October 8th, after a USAC Board of Appeals hearing, Bobby Unser was declared the winner, capturing his third and final Brickyard victory. Number three, May of 78, Bobby and Brother Al had their highest one-two finish in their Indy careers. Bobby finished sixth, while Al became the fifth driver to record the hat trick at Indy. Al's victory gave the Unser family their fourth Brickyard win in the 70s and fifth overall. Number two, 1987, Al Unser Sr. arrived at Indianapolis without a car. But Al Sr., at 47 years young, got a Penske backup and was an injury replacement for Denny Ungaius. In one of the great long shot stories in the history of the old Brickyard, Al Unser Sr. started in 20th place, took the lead with 17 laps remaining, and held on for his record tying fourth Indy win. And at number one in the 1992 500, Al Unser Jr. and Scott Goodyear provided one of the most dramatic finishes in Indianapolis history. The checkered flag is out. Goodyear makes a move. Little Al wins by just a few tenths of a second. Perhaps the closest finish in the history of the Indianapolis 500. Uh, some great indie moments over the years, courtesy of the great Unser family legacy here. And before we go, guys, we've got to give us, if you would, give us each individually your best indie moment. Al Jr.? Well, it, it, um, it, it's, it's hard to decide which one. I mean, uh, you know, the, the first one was very exciting with, with Scott and I, and, and uh, you know, it was a heck of a team effort. In, uh, in 94, it was a, a heck of a team effort with the development of the 209 engine and, uh, and, and racing for Roger. And so, you know, uh, the first one uh, got all the pressure off of me. And, the, and, uh, and so, you know, I would lean towards that one. Dad? Well, you know, <clears throat> like Al says, your first one, you always wonder if you're able to win it. And then things start happening after you you know show that you can win but I still think the last one you know the last one I came here without a ride and and uh, it was a storybook race and all of a sudden you know you, you end up winning it and even when I got the checker flag I said man I did I really do this you know so I I, I think the, the last one it uh, meant a lot and then of course when you don't win them and your son's able that's when it's the greatest Junior, the legacy is going to continue on with the Andrettis and the Enzers. We were talking about that. Is there a race between you and Michael to get your sons to be the next generation to win? <laughs> Does that ever enter into any conversation or anything in the family? No, not at all. I mean, uh, you know, racing is is uh, is it's just a um, a wonderful uh, uh, way of, of life, and and uh, you know the. The, just the fact that uh, that my son has showed interest in it, uh, you know, really makes me proud, and, and uh, it's something that uh, that I hope uh, continues on and on. You know, I've got uh, I've got an, another son, little Joe. He's eight years old, and so uh, you know, we'll just we'll see. Yeah. Well, guys, we appreciate so much you coming on and letting us relive some of those great Unser moments here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. One of the first families of open wheel racing, the Unser family, and it all started way back in 1958 when Jerry Unser first came here. In all, there have been six different Unsers come to Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and the win total stands at nine. Some great memories. A day we salute the Unser family legacy here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway.